welcome to His Gospel Christian Fellowship. It's an honor to have you join us in worship service today. We invite you to visit us virtually at any time. Our mission is to share the good news of Jesus Christ and to love and support one another in our Christian growth. We are not here to judge, criticize, or condemn anyone. We teach, preach, and live God's Word and God's Word alone. We're going to worship and praise today with Pastor Lowe and Brother Cameron. Amen. I know I am. So wherever you are, please join me. Just lift up your voices and look at the words that are on your screen and sing along with me. We worship you. We worship you. Thanks again for joining us today. Here's Pastor A.J. Robert with today's message. 
Amen, amen. Thank you, Reverend Kelly. Can we, um, as Reverend Kelly was praying, uh, the song that Pastor Lori Owens was playing in the background, please don't stop. We're going we're gonna to sing just a little bit of that. Uh, but it's, it's more than anything. If, am I right? Can we, play, can we sing a little bit of that? And I'll sing along with you. I was already singing, amen. <laughs> My hands in adoration unto you, you reign on the throne. Because of you, my cloudy days, and I can sing to you this song. Love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Amen. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Uh, my name is Antonio Burnett. And welcome to His Gospel Christian Fellowship. It is an honor uh, to have you join us in worship service this morning. Wherever you are, I know that we have a congregation here in person. We have a congregation there online. So we've got people all over, literally all over the United States. We've got people on the East Coast in Georgia. We've got people uh, up north in the Chicago area. We've got people down south in Louisiana, amen. And we know that we're here on the West Coast in California. So wherever you are, somewhere it's the afternoon, here it's the morning, wherever you are in Africa, in Madagascar, I don't know. Uh, but welcome to his gospel. Uh, I'm going to ask you to bear with me a little bit today. I'm trying, I'm trying out something different. Usually I come up here with my notes and I do have scripture as well. Uh, but today I brought my laptop up here for me. I know that this is uh, Silicon Valley. So we've got some, some tech uh, that, that is ingrained, deeply ingrained in our society especially. Um, but welcome, and it's always a pleasure to have you join us. We invite you to join us whenever your schedule permits, amen, but uh, we want to make sure that you're staying, uh, you're being fed by the word. Um, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and stand as we prepare to read some scripture. Um, as I always say, the Bible, this is not the cat and hat. If you need a Bible, it's in the back as, as well. Uh, you can pull out your Bible app. I know some people have it on their phones, but we stand out of reverence and respect for God, amen that this is not just any typical book, that this is not a Harry Potter book, this is not even a book on prayers that I wrote, which is great, but it's not the Bible. The Bible is, uh, some say, it's, it's the basic instructions before leave, living, uh, leaving earth, or the basic instructions uh, for living uh, to pursue everlasting life, but this Bible is God's sacred word. It is the word given to us God inspired, God breathed through humans so that we may know how we are to live our lives successfully. Amen. And when I say successfully, I don't mean uh, financially, that God can bless you that way as well. But I mean spiritually. This is your spiritual food. This will sustain you in any in every season of your life. Uh, so with that said, we're going to grab our Bibles. We'll be coming out of John 3, uh, John 3 and the gospel. Uh, my Bible is the New Living Translation, so depending on whatever translation you have, there may be a little bit of uh, variance, uh, but it, it should be okay. Mine is New Living Translation. We're reading John 3, and we'll be reading verses 1 through 21. Uh, that's more Bible than some people have done all week, all month, all year, but it's all right, amen? We're here. We're going to study it together today. We're going to join uh, with one another and, and delve more deeply into God's word and see what he would have for us to see. Amen? Amen. All right. Uh, John 3, verse 1 
from the New Living Translation begins, there was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said. Rabbi just means teacher. We all know that God sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, exclaimed Nicodemus? How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants. Just as you can hear the wind but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. How are these things possible, Nicodemus asked. How are they possible, asked Nicodemus. Jesus replied, you are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things? I assure you, we tell you that we know what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the Son of Man has come down from heaven. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Uh, today I'm going to speak from the subject, the subject that is more like a charge. It is to encourage you, it is to push you, it is to uh, try to get you to be born again. I know that you were born on May 3rd, 1997. May 16th, 1950. May 12th, 1950. But today, I want to encourage you to be born again. You may now be seated. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's prepare our minds and our hearts and our bodies, our soul, our spirits. Lord, we pray that today's word would be seed to the sower and bread to the eater, Lord. That you would give us minds to think heavenly. That you would give us hearts to understand heavenly. That you would give us ears to hear your voice in this text, Lord. We know that this is not just any regular book, Lord, that this is scripture. And it guides us, it corrects us, it convicts us, it transforms us, it leads us, it restores us, it replenishes us, it gives us peace and hope, Lord, and prosperity. Lord, we thank you so much for your word that is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path, as David said, Lord. We pray that we will be transformed, that our insides would be turned outward that we would understand you, that we would grow in wisdom and in stature, Lord, that we would know who you are, that we would know your voice, that we would know your spirit, that we would know when you're in the room, Lord. We pray that this word, this word would settle on our hearts and on our spirits like the dew that settles on the grass in the morning. We pray that this word would give us light, that it would reveal anything hidden in darkness, Lord that it would tell the truth, any lies that have been turned to us, Lord, any lies that have been told to us, Lord, that this word 
would be the truth that sets us free. So we thank you, we praise you, we bless you, we magnify you, we honor you, we praise you, Lord. And all of God's people in unison said, amen. Let's get to this word. How y'all feeling today? Can somebody make some noise for the Lord? Can you clap? Can you stump? Can you shout? Can you, you got some energy? You got something? Come on now. We can, we, can, we can be excited about God. I don't know who told us that we come to church and just sit stiff. Like, don't say nothing. Don't look no way. Just have fun. Amen. The Lord said rejoice. Rejoice. Go back and read the book of Proverbs. Go back and read the book of Psalms. All throughout scripture, we see people and women and men and children of God rejoicing. When the children of Israel came through the waters, the Red Sea, they came singing songs. When David had come back from war, he came dancing. And he danced so hard his clothes fell off. And people were talking about him. His own wife just calling him, saying that he was embarrassing to her. Amen. We want you to have fun in here. You don't have to sit and be stiff wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Today we're going to be speaking from the subject, uh, be born again. To be born again. Uh, when we think about uh, birth, any woman has, who has given birth or any man who has uh, seen birth, know that it's not an easy process, amen? That there is pain, that there is turmoil, that there is, and I, I, I never gave birth. I'm just, I just know what, I, what I've been told, amen? But that it is pain, it's, it's turmoil, that there is screaming and grunting, that it is bloody, and you might need some medication, and some people passing out, and people are gripping each other's arms, and it's a process. And that's why they call it labor, amen? Because it's no easy feat, it is hard work. And I ne never gave birth, so don't judge me, but I just know I'm saying what I've been told and what, I, what I've seen, what I've heard, amen? Today's topic, today's subject is to be born again. And I want you to join me as we, uh, I just want to tell a story. So sit down, relax, sit back, and let's just look at this text. When we come to John 3, what we have is an opportunity. This is a moment where we have a chance to eavesdrop, to sort of spy, in on a conversation held between two prominent men. You ever heard a conversation taking place and you were on the other side of the door with your ear pressed against it? And you knew you shouldn't have been listening, but you were. You ever been on the phone on three-way and two people talking and you sitting in the background like, this is that moment, this is that opportunity to see the exchange of knowledge, the exchange of information happening between Jesus and a Jewish religious leader, a Pharisee named Nicodemus. Amen? So let's, let's just listen in. At this time, it's one late dark evening, and Jesus is greeted by a man named Nicodemus, who was a leader. And Nicodemus comes to Jesus, and he says, you know, we've seen your miracles, we've seen your signs. He says, Rabbi, which means teacher, we know that that you have been sent to us, that you are here to teach us. And because Jesus is a teacher, he's a rabbi, he's a healer, he's the Messiah, but in this moment, he steps in his role of a teacher. Like myself, I'm a teacher. I spend most of my time when in, in my professional career speaking to children, or I'm in the church speaking to you, or I'm outside, and even when I'm not in the classroom, I'm teaching somebody, learning something. But Jesus tells him, he says, I'll tell you the truth, that if you cannot be born again, if you will not be born again, that you will not go into the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus, and this surprises me because Nicodemus, he's a religious leader. He's a Pharisee. He's a respected man. This is what the text says. He's respected. He should know these things. And he responds to Jesus and he says, how can an old man go back into his mother's womb? How can an old man go back into his mother's womb? How can an old man go back into his mother's womb? One thing I want you to know is when Jesus makes statements like this, that there, was, there is depth to it. This is not just a statement. This is something that you have to think about, amen? So how can an old man go back into his mother's womb? And Jesus and Nicodemus are going back and forth between one another. They're having this discussion. And Jesus eventually tells him, he says, that you must be, be washed by, you must have the water and you must have the spirit. And when we look at the text, 
the water is always used as a symbolic tool, as some analogy. They're comparing water to being cleansed, to being purified, to being made whole, to being made righteous, to being uh, sanctified, to be made holy. And he says that you also must have the spirit, that you can't just be clean, but you also must have the spirit. And the spirit of God is having a relationship with God. And I want to stop on this point. This is point number one. Let's get to point number one. The, uh, we're going to talk about spirituality. Amen? We're going to talk about not just in, existing in a context where there is carnality, where we're just people walking around, eating and breathing and drinking and using the bathroom and going to shows. That's all physical. That's, all, that's simple stuff. Let's talk about the spiritual stuff because there are things that happen on a spiritual level. When you walk down the street and you see somebody jittering and shaking and you think that it's drugs, and sometimes it is, sometimes it's mental illness, sometimes it's spiritual. When you walk into a room and some, something just don't feel right and you see something and you know it, you, you see a person and you know that their energy is bad, that's spiritual. This is the discernment that God has placed, the spirit that God has injected into each and every one of us to have discernment. To know that we don't ex just exist in a context with physical things. We also exist in a context or in a world with spiritual things. Spirits exist. When we think about issues like poverty and greed and lust and fornication and strife and war, it's not just physical. It's spiritual. Sometimes the people's spirits aren't right. Something on the inside of them. Their spirits are not right. He talks about, he talks about how there is uh, wind and how we don't know where it comes from. And, but we, and we don't know where it is going. But that it does exist. Right now, I want to take this time to publicly, to sincerely apologize to Pastor Lori Owens. Yes, you. You. Only Lori Owens in here. Last week, we were having Bible study, and we were studying some scripture from the Bible. Also, I think if you got, some, if you got to apologize to somebody, apologize, anybody. But I was, we were talking, we were having Bible study, and it was about five of us on this Zoom session. And we were talking about spirituality and salvation and being saved. And Pastor Lowe made the statement that, uh, that the good news can be looking at the world around you, looking at the ducks, and you remember I made a jeering, uh, sort of a, a jeering, a snide remark, a smart comment. I said, salvation isn't, you don't get salvation from looking at ducks on a lake. And I thought I was so smart when I said that. But I thought about it and something convinced, uh, convicted me. Later that night I went to bed and I slept real good, y'all. This is like, you ever slept that real good where you got slobber all on the pillow? The lines from the, 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 the pillow sheet is all on your face. You wake up and you don't know what day it is. I slept real good. You only sleep that good 10 days out of the entire year. But I woke up in the morning and I sat up and I twisted my body to the side of the bed. And I started to like wipe my face. And as I was wiping my face, I looked down and I looked at my hands. And as I looked at my hands, I looked at the patterns in my palms. And I began to inspect my hands more closely. Everybody look at your hands. Pick your hands up and just look at them. Just look at them. And you see the M in the middle of your hand. You see your knuckles. And I began to look at my fingers. And then I began to look more closely. And I began to inspect my fingerprints. And then the Lord hit me. There are nearly 8 billion people on the planet. And I'm the only one with these fingertips. I am a creation. And if my mama and my daddy were told to make me again, they couldn't. So if they can't make me again, there must be something else that created me. And if I am a creation, then there is a creator. And if there is a creator, then spirituality exists. So don't let anybody tell you, no, don't believe in those spirits. That stuff don't exist. Spirituality exists. It exists, amen? So as they continue talking with one another, 
Jesus tells him that the, he tells him that th that there must be that the person uh, must inherit a spiritual life, that they must understand a spiritual life. And right now, I just want to pull a couple of scriptures together that you can refer back to if you want to write these down and look them up in your own time. That's fine. But we're going to go to John four, and we're going to go to John four verses twenty, verse twenty three, and verse twenty three says, "But the time is coming, indeed, it is here now." when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. Amen. You can't just worship him in truth. You've got to worship him in spirit. We're going to go to Genesis, the very first book of the Bible, Genesis 1. And if I'm moving too fast, don't worry. I can share these with you afterwards. We can put them in the comments. Genesis 1, verse 27. It says, so God created human beings. Whoa, so God created hum human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Wait a second. But if God exists and God is a spirit and God created me in his image, that means that I am a spirit having an earthly in-body experience. Yesterday, we had a funeral celebrated a funeral here at the church. And although the body was not in the sanctuary, there have been many, many funerals that have gone to where the body was in the sanctuary and the casket was open. And you see this person, this body laying there, and they're not moving. Something is not there. You know what it is? It's a spirit. The spirit is not there. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 it says, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. So they're having this discussion with one another, and Jesus is telling him about the spiritual life, the spiritual life. And he says that the wind comes and nobody knows where it came from, and that the wind goes, and nobody knows where it is going. And he says, if you can't believe me about earthly things, then certainly you will not believe me about spiritual or heavenly things. And I want to stop here, and I want us to just speak about point number two. And point number two tells us to believe God. Believe in God and believe God. Because now we exist in a context, or in a world, where lies run rampant, where lies be, are the new truth. People will lie on the regular. I don't know what to believe. If I watch Fox News, they're saying something. If I watch CBN, they're, CBS, they're saying something else. If I read the Washington Post, I'm hearing this. If I read the New York Times, they're saying that. Lies are all over the place. And they call them alternative facts. So they got you believing that lies are now the truth. But one thing that we know about God, amen, one thing that we know about God, and I want us to take it to some scripture, John 14, verse 6, and it says, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you want to know truth about you, Read the Bible. If you want to know the truth about gender and sexuality, it's in the Bible. If you want to know the truth about finances, it's in the Bible. If you want to know the truth about how to raise your children, it's in the Bible. If you want to know the truth about how to respect your parents, it's in the Bible. If you want to know the truth about how to stay committed to your spouse, it's in the Bible. If you want to know truth about how you are to live your life, how prayer is done, it's in the Bible. If you want to know the, the truth about how to take care of animals, it's in the Bible. Anything that you need, it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can go to heaven. No one can go. He says, well, you cannot come to my father. He's saying, you cannot go to heaven except through Jesus. Right. I'm going to call it out. Buddhism. Mm -mm. Hinduism. Mm -mm. If you want to know the truth, it's in the Bible. Right. It's in God's word. And there's no other way to get there except for reading his word. So we talked about one. There is a spiritual life. We talked about point two. Believe God. And now I want to talk about point three. Because as we continue to read this scripture, we see in verse 15, John 3, verse 15, he says, So that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. 
verse 16. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. And right now I want to talk about point number three. God died for you. God sent himself in the form of a person, his son, wrapped in swaddling clothes, placed him in a manger so that 33 years later he would be sacrificed. Because the Bible tells us that the penalty for our sin, the penalty for our cheating, for our lying, for our adultery, for our fornication, the the penalty for our greed and for our lust was death. So God sent himself to show you how much he loved you. You and you and me and you. He sacrificed himself. And when you know that God died for you, when you know that something sacrificed itself for you, you start to live differently. When you know that your mom broke her back working two jobs so that you would have food on your table, you start to appreciate it more. When you know your father slaved in on the streets as a construction worker with people calling them the N-word, you take your, you take your private education, uh, uh, you, you honor it. You're thankful for it. When you have a job, and it's hard. A lot of young kids don't know this now, but when you got a job and you go in every day and it's hard work, but it's what feeds your kids, you learn to be thankful for it. When you look at scripture and you realize that God died for you, that there was a sacrifice, you begin to walk differently. You begin to know who you are because you know who God is and he gave himself up for you. And you have a level of humility yet confidence because you know who your God is. When you realize that God died for you, you realize who you are and your purpose. Amen. I want to bring us a little bit of scripture. Point number three, God died for you. In the book of Romans, chapter three, verse 25, it says, For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. That we are forgiven, that we have salvation, that you don't have to mope around, that you don't have to be depressed and angry and jealous and bitter. Because God has forgiven you, but you got to accept him, accept him in your life. So he says that God sent his only son in the world. He sent his only son in the world so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And as they continue talking, I love this part because this, what I'm getting ready to tell you is very, uh, it's the opposite of what a lot of pastors and ministers and preachers will tell you. They'll tell you to be humble and to be quiet, amen? But when I look at verses 20 and 21, I see a different message being communicated to us. So let's go to John 3. Verse, we're going to start at verse 20. And it says, All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. So if you're living a good life and you don't have no friends, don't worry about it. Your presence convicts them. Amen? Let's look at verse 21. He says, But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what what God wants. Come to the light. If you're living a good life, come to the light so everybody can see that you are doing what God wants. Point number four, show off for God. Show off for God. Show off for God. You don't have any power unless you show off for God. You you have to be a walking, living, breathing, eating, thinking, speaking, testimony. Show off on them. Let them know what God brought you through. Let them know where you came from. Let them know what you're doing now. I thought about this, you know, and I just, I, they're 27 years old and I'm going to show off for God because I used to be poor, homeless, broke, living in a shelter, battling addictions, no friends, fake friends, no friends, fake friends. And he's made me by the age of 27, multiple degrees, book author, traveling the world. The woman sitting over here, that's my beautiful wife. We got a dog living a good life. God is doing great things in my life. I'm going to show off for the Lord. Grandparents doing well. Church doing great. We're doing so good. God has been good to us during this time. People lost jobs. Some of us got raises and promotions and we're able to retire without worrying. When God starts working in your life, show off for him, not for you, 
show off for him because he wants you to rejoice. He wants you to tell of the goodness, of his goodness, and how great he is, and all of the amazing things that he's done to you and through you and for you. He had his hand over you when you were young, when you were a child, when you were sinning, when you were in strip clubs, when you were hanging out with bad friends, when you were smoking, when you were drinking, when you were battling addictions. He had his hand over you. And when you finally learned who he was, and he continued to bless you abundantly, exceedingly, above all that you could ask or imagine, you got to let the world know because he has called you to it. Let me get some scripture because I know I got some people that's saying, oh, no, that's not, that's not scriptural. That's not scriptural. So let's go to Psalm, the book of Psalm 96. And we're going to read verses 2 through 6. And I've only pulled a few verses, but there is verses, all scriptures all throughout the Bible about God telling his chosen people to publish their, his works, to let the world know all of the goodness and the, grateful, the great things that he has done in their own lives. Right. Psalms 96 uh, verses 2 through 6 tell us, Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Each day proclaim the good news that he saves. Publish his glorious deeds among the nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things he does. He does. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. The gods of other nations are mere idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty surround him. Strength and beauty fill his sanctuary. Matthew 5 and 15 tells us. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. The great things that God is doing in your life and his word, God wants you to go out and publish it to the nations. Let everybody know. Tell of his goodness. Let them know what he has done, how he has accomplished greatness in your life, how he has transformed you, how you used to be a dirty, filthy rag, but now he has made you something to, worthy to be honored and to be praised. We can be praised, too. We don't worship ourselves, but you, every time when your child gets, when your baby child, you're trying to, uh, to uh, potty train them, what you say? You say, oh, look at little boo-boo. Look at him. That's praise. That's praise. Congratulations. This is a season, a season of congratulations. Let everyone know how good God has been in your life. So in this word, we talked about four points. We talked about the spirituality, that there was a spiritual life. And then we talked about uh, believing in God. And then we talked about how God died for you. And then we talked about showing off for God. And what I don't want to be is a, one of those advocates, one of those preachers that preach at you and tell you what you need to do without telling you how to do it. <laughs> because you can leave this place saying, oh, yeah, clapping your hands. But when you leave, you don't have any instruction on what to do. So I want to give you three points. And this is actually this is fairly simple. Three points about how you can be born again. Because when you're born again, God works in your life. I'm a testimony. I'm not lying to you. This is truth. This is truth. Conclusion, to be born again, take these three steps, three steps, three steps. One, read the Bible. Reading the Bible is how we learn the nature of God. This is how we learn God's character. This is how we learn God's personality. So when somebody tries to lie to you, you say, oh, that's not God. You, had, you walk this life with discernment. You're not, e you're not fooled. You're not easily fooled, certainly. Read the Bible. You learn the character of God. You develop discernment and wisdom and understanding about how to live your life and how, when to go left and when to go right. And then number two, pray and then pray in the spirit. This is something that made spraying in the spirit takes a little bit of time. And you learn how to pray into the spirit when you read your Bible because you develop a relationship with Christ. When you pray and pray in the spirit, this is where you develop an actual relationship with God. Mind you, praying requires both speaking to God and listening. So your prayer is not done when you're done talking. Your prayer is done when he's done talking. Pray and then listen. So one, read your Bible. Two, pray. Three, accept him. Accept him. Accept God as your own personal Lord and Savior. Accept him for who he is 
that he is the creator, the alpha and the omega, the lily of the valley, that he created all there is and all there will be, all there was, except God. This is where we allow ourselves to be used by him. This is where we allow ourselves to be used by him. Lauren and I, we were having a discussion just uh, yesterday, and, um, and I gave her a pin. And I said, uh, take this pin and write your name down. And she took the pin, and she wrote her name down, and she writes in cursive, you know, she got to be all, she got to do it all nice. She wrote it in cursive, and then I said, this is us. God just wants to use you. He wants to use you to make other people's lives better. He wants to use you to create a better world. He wants to use you to so pe show people what servitude and servanthood looks like. He wants to use you to bless you, to show people that when they obey him like you did, they can be blessed like you are. He wants to use you. Be a pin. Be an instrument for Jesus Christ. So go ahead and let's stand to your feet wherever you are. And if you want to take this message, this opportunity to get to know Jesus Christ as your own personal Lord and Savior, I'm not going to embarrass you, call you out, make you fill out a, a card or put the microphone in your face. Just repeat these words after me. And you don't have to say them uh, with, a, with a loud voice. But say them and know that God is listening. And say them like you want him to hear you. And this is the Lord's Prayer. And the Lord's Prayer says, just repeat after me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, forever, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And if you confess those words with your mouth and you believe them in your heart, then you're saved. You're saved. You have accepted the salvation that comes from God. If you confessed it with your mouth and you believed it in your heart. Now, at this point, you have a, a relationship to walk with God. You can't just say, uh, we're together, but I don't spend time with you. A relationship is it's made strong when you spend time with the other individual when you get to know the other individual, when you're honest about who you are and what you've been through and what you need done, and when you pray and you pray in the spirit, the relationship is developed, amen? And you will continue to see the fruit, the evidence, and the hand of God all throughout your life, amen? So at that, I'm gonna to conclude today's service. I wanna thank you. Go ahead and clap your hands. Let's praise the Lord, amen? Praise the Lord. If you wanna shout, you can do that too, amen? This is not a amen. stiff church. I want to thank you all and, and praise God for all of you uh, for joining us in worship service today. Uh, whether you're here in person or there online, it's, uh, it's always a pleasure to have, a, uh, to have a, a group of believers, especially together, to honor and acknowledge God and worship him in, 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 in spirit and in truth. So with that said, we're going to have uh, our minister, Reverend Kelly, come up, and he's going to deliver um, a prayer over the tithes and the offering. And then he's going to uh, help us to, to leave this place. He's going to uh, shepherd us out of this place. So I hope that you were blessed. I hope that this message was transformative and that ultimately a seed was planted. If just a seed was planted, then my mission here was successful. I'm a servant. I'm just here to deliver the word of God to you. And then I go and sit down, and then I go and I'm serving you now. Amen. Amen. Uh, so with that said, uh, let's go ahead and let's give the Lord another point, a hand clap and welcome Reverend Kelly as he makes his way this way. Giving is a part of worship. If you don't already give virtually, now is a great time to do so. You can go to our website and click on the give button at the top of our landing page to do so. Or you can give through Venmo or Zelle. Again, the email address is for both, is on your screen. Your giving is a matter between you and the Lord. However, we do want you to know that when you give to HGCF, 
that the money given is used directly and exclusively in supporting God's work. No member of the leadership of His Gospel receives a salary or a stipend from the church. Thank you very much and have a blessed week. If you're looking for a church home, look no further. You can become a member of HGCF no matter where you live in the world. We would love to have you become a part of our family. If you'd like more information about our church, or if you'd like to join with us, just send an email to hisgospel at hisgospel.org. Again, that's hisgospel at hisgospel.org. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you.